As you continue your chess journey, the starting position in front of us is going to be very familiar to you. But how often do you think about the board without any pieces? When you take a look at a blank chessboard, what comes to mind for you? Do you consider it a canvas with unlimited potential, the beauty just waiting to be discovered? Or perhaps you see 64 squares, 32 light and 32 dark. It's very important to become familiar with the chessboard. Specifically, the chessboard looks flat and all the squares appear the same, but not all squares are created equally. Consider the center squares E4, D4, D5, and E5. These squares are the chess mountain, the highest point on the chessboard. You want to make sure you have your fair share of the chess mountain or inner center, and the best way to do that is planting flags or pawns in the center of the board. You're claiming E4 is your territory on the mountain. Black will often play E5, doing the same thing. The square surrounding the chess mountain or inner center is what we call the outer center. You can consider the outer center as the chess hill, not as high as the chess mountain, but still elevated above all the other squares. When we think about developing our pieces, think about the chess mountain and hill or inner center and outer center. We want to develop our forces to help control these critical squares. Now that we have a general idea of where we want to place our pieces, let's return white's pieces to the starting squares. Let's pretend for a moment that we can only move two pawns and the rest of our pieces only once. Where would you develop your forces? Thinking about the chess mountain or inner center, we don't have to hesitate to play e4 and d4. Knights love to jump into the outer center and help control the key central squares with knight f3 and knight c3. Bishops love open diagonals, so bishop c4 and bishop f4 are natural squares for these pieces. Take a look at all of the squares these bishops control in enemy territory. Castling has a very important role in our development. For this exercise, let's consider castling as the king move. White's king wisely evacuates the center and now has three loyal pawns protecting it. Castling also allows us to bring our rook into the action, especially helping control the center, with a move like rook e1. Now we only have our queen and rook on a1 to move. White's queen can be well placed on e2 or d2. Let's move the queen to d2. Now white's rooks are connected, and white's queen backs up the dark squared bishop, supercharging that diagonal. Finally, we would complete our development with rook a to d1. Notice our two central pawns, knights, and bishops are all in the inner and outer center. White's major pieces, the queen and two rooks, help support the center, so in the future, white can start advancing pawns up the board. Of course, this is only a dream scenario, and our opponent certainly has something to say about this. So what does a position look like when both sides are following this strategy, activating their pieces and controlling these key squares? Let's take a look. This is a very typical opening position and notice the balance of the forces. Both sides have pawns in the inner center, controlling their fair share of space. Both sides have castled their king to safety and the knights and bishops are all controlling key squares in the center. With all this in mind, let's have some fun and see development in action. How important is it to develop our pieces to safe, active squares where they work together in harmony? When one side follows this advice and the other side ignores it, we'll soon find an answer. After e4, e5, knight f3, white combines development with attack. Black's most popular and flexible move is knight c6, developing a piece toward the center and protecting the e5 pawn. Instead, black plays d6. Is this a good move for black? It depends on which bishop you ask. Black's light-squared bishop enjoys a newly opened diagonal, but Black's dark-squared bishop isn't exactly thrilled that it's blocked by its own pawn on d6 and cannot enter the action in the center. Although this move isn't bad, Black's dark-squared bishop will have to accept a more passive role than we would prefer. White's bishop on the king side has no such worries after bishop c4, where it controls key central squares and is pointing directly at Black's weak f7 pawn. Black decides to develop the knight on b8. What is the best square for this piece? If black plays knight a6, when a knight moves to the edge of the board, a famous saying is, a knight on the rim is dim. Black's knight only controls four squares, and none of them are squares in the inner center. Let's compare the last move with knight c6. Developing the knight toward the center with knight c6 is the best square for this piece. 
It controls both E5 and D4, key central squares, and controls a total of 8 squares, twice as many as it controlled on the edge of the board. Black selected a third option and played knight d7. The knight only protects the e5 square in the center, so it's less active, and now Black's light squared bishop cannot move. White continues to demonstrate positive development with knight c3. And once again, Black makes a passive knight move with knight e7. Instead of working together, Black's pieces are standing in each other's way. Notice that both of Black's bishops cannot move which means the knights would have to move again in order to free the natural diagonals for the bishops, wasting more time. Time is not on black's side, and white punishes black's poor development immediately with knight g5. Notice how white's pieces are working together. The knight on g5 joins the light squared bishop in attacking the weak f7 pawn. White's knight on c3 and pawn on e4 join the light squared bishop in protecting the key d5 square which means if black plays the best move in a bad position, d5, white can simply capture the pawn and win material. Instead of blocking this dangerous diagonal with d5, black decides to play f6, turning the position from bad to completely losing. What would you play as white? You may notice that the queen on d8 is trapped, so you could actually win this piece with knight e6 or knight f7. But is there an even stronger move to play? If you found bishop f7, checkmate, great job. The king cannot capture the bishop as it's protected by the knight on g5. Black's pieces smother its own king, so it's game over. Now that you've learned the importance of developing your pieces rapidly toward key central squares and using your pieces to work together as a team, you're ready to show off your skills in the challenges.